No, this was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're gonna take a look at the chess journey of Mr. Ludwig and how he has gone from zero to hero in a way, even if I called him we're gonna dig deeper into how he started playing chess at the first Pog Champs, how far he has come since. Let's begin. Ludwig participated in the first ever Pog Champs back at the start of the pandemic. That was the first time the biggest streamers in the world competed at chess, but he was not invited. Listen in with what he has to say. It all started a few weeks ago when Hikaru who you probably all know by now, who's blown up on Twitch, has 20k average viewers, announced the Chess Pog Champs Tournament. It was meant to be a battle of streamers in chess, coached by top chess players, where the winning players would win a prize. And they announced it along with some names, I think uh, XQC, Moist Critical, Hutch, and I'm watching on the sideline, just, you know, being a streamer, with, uh, with no invite. And you know, no I've lived a lot of my life on Twitch on the outside circle. I've never really collaborated with anyone that has any sort of views. Pretty much just one old man. And that's that's my life. That's been my life. But chess is something I like. I've streamed chess on this channel like before. Chess. And so I thought, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to see if this is possible. The tournament itself that he's talking about happened in the summer of 2020. So this is way before the channel of Ludwig has blown to the heights where it is now. He was not invited, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> but he reached out. And that's exactly what I did. I reached out to chess.com through email. Hey, hope this email finds you well. I saw the recent announcement for the Twitch chess tournament featuring many great streamers and was wondering if there are still openings. I have been playing chess on stream throughout my Twitch streaming career, featuring prominently during my 1v1 streams. I've attached streams. relevant information as far as viewer count, follower count to hopefully show some credibility that I would be good for the event. Let me know if there are any openings. Thank you. And I attached a screenshot of my viewers. And let me say, it was a flex. I was <laughs> trying to flex. I wanted in. I, I assume they probably got several emails. I felt like such a who megalol. Everybody else just copped an invite. I had to send an email to some entity. I saw the email on their on their on their website. I this is literally I was job hunting. And this is where the journey began. Hunting. They said, hey man, thanks for reaching out. We already sent out all 16 invites. Oopsie. But those expire in a couple days and will likely get a rejection. So I'll put you at the top of the alternate list. It's just like <laughs> soccer in high school, boys. I'm on the fucking bench. There's a chance. There's a chance. We will see some field time. And so two days later, let me show you. Because I do see chess.com in my chat saying they sent me an invite. But I'll, I'll, I'll leak. Ooh, I'll leak all day, baby. They said I was an alternate. And then two days later, May 28th, they hit me back and they... Two days later. What do you think Chess.com told Ludwig? What do you think? Is he in? Say this. Regarding the tournament, it looks like everyone is in for now. I got rejected. They literally who megalold me out the building. Even all the work I did, I wasn't in. And I was sad. Because I, I, look, I know I'm on the outside of Twitch's inner circle. I know I do my own thing. But this is the one time, the one game, where I felt like I could be somebody. And it wasn't in the cards. He felt like he could be somebody and he, they did not invite him. Until a few days later. Until. When he figured it out days later where i get an email with the subject line you're in we're in the event group d that must have been such a relief because ludwig tried so hard to get that invite and he was originally 
rejected so <laughs> group d let's see what happened what happened in park champs for ludwig group d was a very tough group and as so was many of the other groups and <clears> that <throat> was not an easy ride park champs number one he lost to boxbox he lost to papa plate and managed to beat Swiftor. With that result, he ended up in the consolation bracket. But in the consolation bracket, he was paired in the semifinals against XQC. And this is a clip from the Ludwig versus XQC semifinals of Pogchance 1 consolation bracket. Listen to what XQC has to say about this position. Now, oh my god, this is so beautiful. <laughs> you have a fork. This is so beautiful. I have a fork. <laughs> oh my god. There's the fork. I take? There's the fork. He doesn't see it right off. Checkmate. Okay, last match. Check. Go. Last match. Uh, yeah. Go, last match, bring it on. He did have a fork, he just blundered that there was checkmate in 1-2 for Ludwig. This looked pretty different from Ludwig's perspective, that whole attack and how much he had seen, what he was up to. I think he knew. He does with the right move. And right here I see something. Only 13-2 turns in, I see something big. I see my queen is threatening here. And if I bring my bishop, I'll have two people attacking together. They call that a battery in chess. He brings his knight here. What he saw as a fork. So beautiful. Oh my god. Oh my god. So beautiful. Yeah, Poor yeah, XQC. Okay. Last match. Still. Yeah. Check. Last match. Bring it up. Mate. My accuracy for this game, 99.1%. I didn't make a single wrong move. 99.1 accuracy and that queen bishop batter that Ludwig created very much on purpose. Look at that! Suddenly, Ludwig, who barely scored in his group, is in the finals of Puck Chance 1. And the other player that qualified all the way to the finals was Moist Critical. Now we have Ludwig versus Moist Critical in the first ever Puck Chance finals of the Constellation Bracket. Let's see how it went. Ludwig lost the first game, that's a fact. But the reason why he lost the first game is not as one would expect. He was not outplayed. It was not a brilliant game by Charlie. He blundered an exchange, that is, he gave up his rook for a minor piece at an earlier stage of the game. So Ludwig is doing very well. He is winning. He should be winning here. But then he did this. Oh, but I'm greedy. I don't want to draw. I'm gonna bring my rook over, uh, over and jam this bitch in, but I run out of time. I think to myself, hey, if I bring my queen down here, it'll put him in check again. He'll move over and then I can bring my rook up and then I can get checkmate, except I miss one thing. Why are there two question marks here? I give away my queen. I go from almost guaranteed winning to losing in one turn. I try playing on. The bot is gambit! He blundered his queen in a winning position and therefore he lost it. Luckily, every Pog Champs match consists of more than one game, as you guys know it. So then he played again. And at this moment, I saw it. I saw the path to victory. Do you see it? This bishop is currently defended by one piece, but attacked by two. Not only that, but if I take with my bishop first, and then he takes with his pawn, and then I take with my knight, I fork his queen and his rook. He has to pick one to save. Obviously, he picks the queen. I take the rook, and now I'm up three points. We continue on playing. I try to make the best moves I can, pushing my pawn all the way up, allowing myself to get a pawn for a rook. That's how scary my pawn was on this rank. <laughs> may and not now have been needed, I'm but up seven Charlie points. was panicking there Bouncing a bit. Bouncing back from the lost game one in an unprecedented way. Absolutely and unprecedented fun, way. I end up going plus 10. I'm feeling good. But that meant that Ludwig has 
tie the score. It's 1-1 one, one now and they need to play a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker at Pog Champs is yet another game but with shorter time control. So Ludwig now with the white pieces, they are in this sudden death game going head to head in the finals after a 1-1 one, one result. And this was the position. Making some pretty good plays here. And in fact, has an advantage. At this point, he's up one pawn over me. And again, I'm a little nervous, but I know I'm faster and I know I can bring it back. So the game continues and I make a genius play. Rook to check. He blocks with his bishop. I take the bishop, meaning the only piece he can block with is now this pawn. Free pawn for me and he's in check. So I get a free extra move. I'm in a really good spot here. You can probably see a couple good moves. This is a free pawn. But I decide after he ends up moving his king that I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to protect him. I'm going to try to go for protection here. Not a bad decision. Which ended up not being the wisest decision, I realized. <laughs> because I, I pinned didn't want to tell you about that. Ludwig meaning that if I move this guy Rookie now, is great, though. they get a queen. Ludwig, Ludwig would have, I think gotten away with not choosing the most precise move if Moist Critical didn't find Rook E8 because it's Rook E8, the key move for Black, that will now manage to simplify the position. It's forcing a trade of Rooks and that's the issue with the Queen on E2 that this Rook on E6 is pinned. You cannot move it neither to the left nor to the right because then the Queen is hanging. So that's the only reason why the Queen move wasn't good but unfortunately for Ludwig, Charlie found it. He played the best defense and from here on, he takes over which is bad for me so i'm like okay that's fine so i end up taking his rook he takes with queen i decide to keep my queen because i think i'm in a better position i put him in check he moves his bishop i put him in check i'm thinking ooh, free pawn or free bishop again trying to make good moves in literal seconds he makes a brilliant move very by strong blocking only the move bishop, to not or excuse the me bishop. the check with only his queen, move forcing me to trade we're literally even I move my knight out, he moves his pawn up, and that's where I'm like, huh, this doesn't seem too bad. So I take it, and then he takes with bishop, and then I realize his plan all along. I'm now forked, his bishop's attacking oh, my no. king oh, and my no. knight, I have to protect the king, and so I lose a knight. And I'm down big now, I try fighting back, taking a pawn where I can, but the damage is done, he's in a way better position. Mm. and. He forces my king to go up here. And with one final move of his rook, puts my king into check. Can't escape into these squares because this pawn. Can't escape into these squares because this bishop. And I lose. The check first time me. I've ever lost a critical in a 3-0. It's in front of 60,000 people. And Ludwig was confident because he said he's the faster player, but he got checkmated. He lost the finals to Moist Critical. That was his first ever Pog Champs. He signed up for the tournament, I believe, with the rating of about 900. Uh, during the tournament, it was around 1,000, bit above 1,000. He had approximately that rapid rating uh, during, during the Constellation bracket. But this is not an end to Ludwig's chess career. He did become the biggest chess streamer of all time back then. All the way up, Ludwig, who had the most viewers by far far than any other individual chess he's streamer. A ch he's a chess streamer and the reason why his stream during the Pog Champs finals against Moist Critical, that very first Pog Champs, the finals versus Charlie, it peaked in viewership because chess.com had an issue. Their internet provider went down in the entire United States of America, there was no chess.com broadcasting, all the streams were down and the people who wanted to know what's happening in the match in order to see the game all went to Ludwig's channel. He was the main platform to show the game. Critical's 13th to 22nd moves weren't the only collapses during the game though. Due to wildfires in the Phoenix area, Chess.com's ISP suffered a widespread outage in Arizona. Okay, maybe I exaggerated with the entire United States, but Arizona is where Chess.com is, was based. And the stream died mid-game 
making the most of an unfortunate situation, we raided both participants and started the final game. And with that raid and other viewers joining in just to know what's happening, Ludwig became the most viewed chess streamer at the time. Most viewed chess streamer! Then Pogchimps 2 came to be and Ludwig is not participating. His girlfriend though, cutie Cinderella, did sign up for Pogchimps 2 and that was a very different dynamic because Ludwig returned in the shape and form of a commentator. He became one of the main hosts of Pogchamps while his girlfriend Cutie was fighting through some really difficult matches and through some di really difficult comments on the show. Check it out. I guess that's the new strat. What about you, Cutie? Because I will say you felt like 51% streamer, 49% chess player in how you were playing. You know what? I'm gonna say it, and this might be a hot take. I, I fucking hate this game. I hate chess. <laughs> I hate this game. I just can't get better at it, and it makes me so angry um, because Levy's a bad coach. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so Levy's a bad coach. That's why. Because uh, yeah. uh, have you done any prep at all? Yeah, I've okay. been playing a lot. I've been. Have you? I've, yeah, I lose every single time I play, and I don't understand why. I just lose. Wait, wait, what specifically have you played? Because when I'm seeing you at night and you're on the couch, you're not actually playing any games. I feel like I'm on Mori if I can just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like... <laughs> How hey. many messages do you have to receive? You keep getting told last to time, and then I go on the couch and you're on your phone. You're looking at TikTok or Instagram. Who knows? Last what? time I checked, you're not my coach. Okay, this is between Levy well, and I. Well, if I, I was your coach, even... then I'd recognize a student who doesn't put the fucking work in. <laughs> you're being mean. Okay, wait a second. Bug chips too. Poor cutie. That was also hilarious. <laughs> Just the whole. This is the whole banter and pretend fight, because it was only just. I believe a few weeks since it was made official that Ludwig and Cutie are a couple. Earlier they were just calling each other a roommate and they didn't want their relationship to be public. And then this was one of their first official appearance together as a couple. Ludwig with the roast, but he's not the only one who was roasting because I roasted Ludwig. Well, actually, no, I did not roast Ludwig. I roasted one of my best friends, Alex, and praised Ludwig. Do you guys remember my amazing rap? I had to improvise a freestyle rap that included lines about Park Champs too. Here's how that went. By the way, that Andrea is so damn hilarious. Way funnier, so much fitter, and you know what? She's got the same job as you, without a Stanford degree. I know I'm not rhyming, but just dropping all these rows from the chat, because I'm really bad at saying anything bad about one of my best friends. I miss you, girl, but I need to tell you that sometimes you do get a mess out of your room. Um, maybe you should tidy up a little bit, just a little bit, and also your hair is not symmetrical. I don't know how that fits into the whole picture, but Ludwig took your job at the Pogchips commentary. He doesn't even know how to play chess, but he nailed it. He's just really good at everything he does. I hope that you will be back with more of the Pogchips, by the way. We will miss you because look at all these variety streamers taking away your full-time money-making field. This was terrible! <laughs> remembered that I not only roasted Alex as I had to, but I also told Ludwig could not play chess. Um, so yeah, uh, back to our review of Ludwig's chess career. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan, even if it does not look like that. Later on, Pogchamps 3 also took place a couple of months later. We are time traveling here. And that was the Pogchamps that caused a social media drama about whether Pogchamps is good or bad for chess. Some of the grandmasters were criticizing Pogchamps, calling it a popcorn tournament and that it should not deserve the number of viewers it has. Those number of viewers, the big audience should be watching classical chess or at least the super grandmasters fighting it out against each other which is 
the better quality chess for sure, but it doesn't mean that PogChamp's participants don't deserve the audience they have and that it should not be an event in the first place. And one of the people out there who was actually defending PogChamp's is called Magnus Carlsen. GG everyone! Eat shit bitches! I'm done! I've done it! <laughs> I've superseded man himself! I've hit the next zone! Everybody at chess.com, all my competitors, thank you and eat shit because it is in. Magnus Carlsen himself. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I do think the event is doing a pretty good job in bringing chess to more people. I never stoop so low as to watch it myself, <laughs> though. If I did watch, I'd probably be rooting for Ludwig. That was more of a Swedish Gothenburg accent, but the point remains. Magnus Carlsen himself, a Ludwig fan, XQC Malding. <laughs> if you stoop that low and actually watched my superior gameplay, maybe you wouldn't be losing all your recent games. Ah, it feels good. It feels good to win life. And it's so typical of Magnus to say it that way that, oh, but I, of course I don't watch it. But if I were to watch it, I would be a Ludwig fan. Typical Magnus humor, typical Magnus sarcasm, but he does appreciate the event and they did become besties. After this tweet, Ludwig contacted Magnus and then the two of them just jumped on a Discord call and played GeoGuessr have, together. Like oh, this. fuck off. Oh my God. You know who told me it was Austria during this round? Do you know who told me? I want, I want you to take one guess at who backseat games told me it was Austria when I guessed it was Switzerland. Yeah, it was Magnus, bro. <laughs> Magnus, you got to give me one game. All right, you can't have chess and GeoGuessr. You can't be better at both. It, 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 my ego, it's, it's going to fall. We have to have it at a certain level. We just can't have this. <laughs> I honestly... And people don't give me enough credit. I am doing this with a huge dis disability. Is that the right term? Yeah. Disadvantage, maybe more accurately. I'm American. <laughs> I'm not trying to say being an... No, I worded that poorly. But that's because I'm American too. All right. You know what? Let's try this. This is a good idea. We're going for another round. But this time with a special guest. Magnus, how are you doing? I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> I uh, imagine it's quite late for you right now, right? No, it's okay. I'm a night owl. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, have you heard of this game before, GeoGuessr? Uh, I haven't actually played before, but I was pretty interested in geography when I was little. So I'm hoping to help. Magnus knew all the flags in the world. At the age of five, he like learned all the flags and the capitals of every existing country. So when he says he was pretty interested in geography, that's what it means. <laughs> that's what it translates to. So yeah, now best buddies Ludwig and Magnus, Pogchamp 3 is underway. Ludwig is competing now. He knows that he's got the support of the world chess champion. They are spending the night playing GeoGaster and sometimes even mentioning chess here and there. This is it. You would think this is the tournament he's gonna win, right? He has to. He needs to do well. Well, he was paired again against Moist Critical. It's the rematch of the decade. I'm hyping it up, but it's true that it was a big deal. It's the man he lost the finals too. Ludwig went down in the finals of the first ever Pog Champs and now it's Pog Champs 3 and the two are facing each other again. Let's listen in with the broadcast. Mm, mm, for good sure. work, Lud. Oh. Sweat for that. Alright, boys. Me versus Charlie. If you don't know, we have played 12 games in the past. The record is six to nine, 15 games. That's bad math. I am up, but the tale doesn't end there because he beat me in the last Pog Champs in the finals of the Constellation Bracket, which was the most viewed chess match of all time on a streaming service at that point. All right, well, here we are. The match started with Charlie having the white pieces and the very promising pass pawn 
that led to many queens on the board for Charlie. Will there so be a stalemate or checkmate? It. It Unfortunately for That's Ludwig, no luck. No luck. He starts the Close match game. by Blood. losing to Charlie. And then here's the second game where Ludwig has to win in order to get a chance for a tiebreaker. He's got the white pieces here. Why is Ludwig not mating critical? <laughs> He's trying to marinate him and enjoy the process a little bit more. He's playing with his food here. There was a mismating one, however, pretty much he anything back with the queen. Is second still attempt winning, at checkmate. So we're going All right. to All right, okay. There is mating two with queen c3, king d1, and either rook takes c1 or queen takes c1, so. And he sees it. There you go. Well, All right. that does it. The score is tied. He did it. He tied the score, and now they need to play an Armageddon. This is different from the Blitz game they played earlier in Pock Champs 1. This time it's white with more time, five minutes. Black has four minutes, but in case of a draw, black will be the one that is favored. This is called Armageddon. Really strange format, but it's to decide finally if there's a winner of the match. Will be checkmate next move after B takes C6 or King wow. A3. And that yep. attack! Checkmate on he the board. Ludwig did it, even though... On the board. That is <laughs> he was the one like with the bad memories him? from Pog Chance 1. He did it. He took that most critical. The rematch, the revenge so Ludwig is you official. Uh, I, look, I I want to play Charlie in one match and one match only, and that's the finals. Everything <laughs> else, I uh, don't I don't care to play him. Uh, more of a lover than a fighter against him. But, uh, you know, I also did not want to play El Duido. So <laughs> I uh, definitely wanted to win this one for that reason the finals but in order to get to the finals you need to qualify again so they were in the same group for pock champs 3 and that's where they faced each other for this rematch important point for ludwig and important in order to collect points in your group stage in order to get to the championship bracket and not the consolation bracket because both of them were in the losers bracket for pock champs 1 this time both of them ended up winning or at least taking first and second place of their group. Look at them go! Ludwig and Moise Critical both qualifying to the championship bracket. It was Mr. Beast and Code Miko who were the unlucky ones going to the consolation bracket. And speaking of Mr. Beast, that was another critical match and may not have been the best of memories for Mr. Beast. $10,000 were on the line in that chess match. $10,000. Ludwig, hope you don't mind me taking your kink today. And Ludwig responded, I'll give you 10000 if you do. And Mr. Beast agreed. It was absolutely the highest stakes ever for a park chance match with an additional massive prize fund that ended with the following game. Uh, we'll check it again is here. Next level stuff. We'll check again here, grab pawn. Like I said, too much Among Us. Who is this imposter? Uh, we're going, going for a mate. There's a bad pun for you. How's that? Bullet World Champion. Wow. Instant chess. Wow, I'm mopping yeah, it up here. Oh my gosh. Um, holy holy that was sick. Oh my lands. Very confident, oh, dominant match. Ludwig beating Mr. Beast, getting that ten thousand dollars extra on top of on top of the scoreboard for Park Champs. He did not only beat Mr. Beast and get the 10k extra, but he also then ended up playing in the quarterfinals against the later winner of Pog Champs. Even though we know that Sardosh managed to win Pog Champs, this match against Ludwig was not a smooth travel toward victory. Sardosh 
won the first game. You would think it was easy after seeing that he checkmates here confidently with the queen up, starting with a win in a match that consists of two games. But in the second game, Ludwig came back with some incredible endgame skills. He did say in Park Champs 1 that he bought Mark Dworetsky's endgame manual and every night he puts it under his pillow. It must be working, it must be the right way to study chess endgames, because he did play this endgame at a really high level. Better, thinking faster, playing smarter. <laughs> Smoke a cigarette, Frenchie. You seem stressed out. It's just a chess game amongst shitters. Relax. Thousands happened in the time we've been playing. <laughs> wow, Sardosh is. I mean, I think Ludwig could win this game. Yeah, he dude. totally can win this game. And the other reason that I think he can win is because again, the only I only routing of the night that that works here is c7 8 b6 c4 it's again a very unusual pathing of the knight and i just i don't whoa maybe he sees it though he found the first move he found the first move he will he place the knight seven. in the corner sardosh okay this is i mean again it, it, it yeah does he see this or was it was this sort of a just a lucky lucky square that he picked i think it might just be a lucky square that he picked yeah, I, I think you're... Yeah, I, it's just so... He doesn't grand, see it. It was a really difficult night in the over that Sardos should it's have a, found. But Ludwig continues with the right plan, so bringing in the king. Yep. And, and the fact that it's so tricky is, is going to make it easier yeah. for Ludwig. No, you're, you're totally right. But Ludwig's going the wrong way with the king. He needs to go to the king's yep, side, he not the now he's side. figured it out. Now he found it. Now yeah, he now found the path. And here we go. King comes into f6 going into, into back going into black camp from the king's side because yeah, now he's going to see knight f8 next move what a brilliant game what Seriously. a brilliant recovery by ludwig it actually what? you know it feels like in the end games ludwig has been a little bit better than than sardosh it's just the critical moments um yep. in that first game just like one or two little minor mistakes shifted it but like in this game he's just outplayed sardosh in this whole end game and now he did. Oh wow! What a finds it, Ludwig. captures the pawn. That's that is the base of the pawn chain. Now the rest wow. of the pawns fall as well. He's got Wait, the pass no, pawns. Girls, we're headed to we're overtime. Going to a tiebreaker. Yep. It's a tiebreaker. Yep. Wow. Oh man, Poland sick. Drink your favorite your Mate. Wait, can I say it like that? Don't mispronounce. He's capturing <laughs> all the pawns of Sardosh, not wow. leaving it up to. Any chance, then Sardosh resigns! I always lose the first. I always lose the first. Did you just do a Trump impersonation? Oh my god, we don't want to talk about that. I always lose the first. He did lose the first game against Charlie. He did lose the first game against Sardosh too. But now it's again a tiebreaker. Ludwig has the white pieces here. And he's going for it. He's going for that attack in the middle of the board by pushing the pawn to e5. And now trade. Pawn is playable. Pawn takes pawn. I think there might be an f6 trick here. Oh, uh, yeah, that would but be. But I think it's very scary to play. For I think sure. it's very scary to go f6 here. Knight takes I think f6 is, is probably good for black, but very scary to play. Yeah. Definitely more chill than Sardosh. Okay. Poor guy. <laughs> Amazing. He takes right okay, away. Takes. That's. Super tough moves. Ludwig is panicking. He's panicking here. Yeah, he's panicking. You can tell Ludwig's panicking. He thinks oh, no. that if the knight is taken, he's got some kind of a checkmate going here. He wants to. He, he literally has just moved the queen to the same five where the rook is targeting e7. Because if the knight was not on d5, that would be checkmate. But with that knight guarding that critical square it's not true he's saying ghost he's giving up the knight for an attack that doesn't really work take me to church okay, it's still very much a game knight c3 is a good no don't take it ludwig don't panic oh, no, no he's panicking Sardis took the bishop not the knight but even like this he continues sacrificing that knight too giving it up when he's seven. Oh, ludwig said had su he's had such good nerves Oh, whoa, 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 does that work or not? Queen but he does, because he has bishop e6. Wow. Even if Ludwig finds queen e2. No. 
two pieces. Wow, two pieces given right up and no mate. Yeah, I mean, what would happen? No, what are you doing? Oh, Trades the queen. Trades the queen. Though? Now 95. Okay. Okay, it's not over. <laughs> this is crazy. It's Dude, not is so anywhere great. near it, over. C7 Fuck, I think... is a fork. This is insane. Like, Ludwig totally panicked and lost his mind Dude, there. What a but... Rook A7 by Sardosh. What wow. a move. That was a killer defensive move, though. The one that Sardosh found in order to not lose his knight. The bishop could have defended too, but that would have been trickier after Rook C1. Uh, Rook A7 at the same time. Incredible board Sardosh. vision there. For he's seven, wow. What a move. This is by, fast by, forward. By he understands like, it's trade, only, you know what's weird? It, it's like when he doesn't have time to think, he's actually playing better. Yeah. He's playing like much better than when he had time to think. Yep. Pretty amazing. This uh, very there's almost nothing I can say negative about this game. Sardos has just played an amazing game. Yeah, seriously. The fact um, that he found F6 too was huge. I mean, he mm -hmm. Blood went yeah. all in when he knew he was better and, and up on time, but it, it's one of those tricky moments. He kind of got a little unlucky with knight takes e5, but still, it's it's really hard to know that you don't have to start sacrificing, you know? Right. Yeah. Really hard to yeah. know. And now the moves play themselves. Bishop c5 check. And what happens a yeah. no, couple of moves yeah, later? No I mean, that tempo with the Sadly for Ludwig, it's checkmate wow. on the board. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I saw that coming. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we saw but a very well played game out. by Sardosh. He deserved to win. He deserved to win the tie record. Who, um, made it to the, the, the semis and then the finals. Half the board when they like a king, a rook, or a king and a queen. Um, th those those were the guys who were very very dangerous. He, he gave it his all in every single match. He gave it his all. I love it too in a very different way, in the more chill vibe. We are having a good time. I felt like. I felt like Sardosh oh. was, was taking it a lot rougher in a sense that he was really nervous and anxious about the matches. But it's also that he practiced so much that he wanted to win it. He wanted to win it all. And you can't always get the result he wants. Um, he did end up winning Pakcham 3. Ludwig not. Ludwig, will, Ludwig with this match was knocked out of Pakcham 3. But that did not break his chess career. After Pakistan 3, he participated in a number of chess events from the Blitz Championships, the Minecraft Championships of the Butter Sisters, to Winner Stays, a new series on chess.com, as well as Twitch Rivals in the chess category, where Rubius and I competed against Grandmaster Robert Hess and him. And this just shows Ludwig's love for chess and his dedication to events like this, because the guy was on a break, he was on a skiing holiday when he participated in Twitch Rivals to try to beat Rubius and me and other squads. He was streaming from a laptop or phone, I don't know whatever device he had, and he had this tiny travel microphone. He put a sock on top of the microphone as the pop filter, the pop filter we use. But for him, it was literally a sock. <laughs> Then this happened in the game that we played. Rubius and me with the white pieces. Grandmaster Robert has asking for a rook move. So hand and brain meaning that the chess player of the team calls out the piece but cannot say to which square or what's the idea. The Pokchum's participant was always the one, the hand that had to pick to what square to move. And then rook. this is how it Get went. Involved, bro. Let's, let's try to make something happen. What are you going to do? Make your dreams come true. Make your dreams come true. Let I'm gonna mute myself for a second. Someone in my chat needs. No! <laughs> I don't have time to mute myself. Poor Robert just wanted to mute himself to tell his stream that they are in trouble. That Ludwig has just hung the rook, gifted it to us for free, and we ended up winning the game. I was trying to troubleshoot because I, I lost my camera. That's me trying to troubleshoot. My camera's missing, but at least we've got the rook, and we won the match later. Well, it was 1-1, one, one, but we won a game, all right? <laughs> we won a game against Lovic, who has we been won. on the chess grind for they so long. We we won! We did it! They they still did better than us at Twitch Rivals, but uh, that's, that's a little side note, all right? So we are time-traveling again, and Twitch Rivals 
couple of times a year would host a chess event again. That would be in this hand and brain format. Ludwig returned as a team with his coach, Grandmaster Robert Hess. And this is a clip from the final moments of the most recent Twitch Rivals that was organized just before Pog Champs 4. I hope you guys noticed who is his opponent. Sardosh. The very same Frenchman who beat Ludwig and knocked him out of Pog Champs 3 made it to the finals with his coach Blitzstream at Twitch Rivals. Ludwig with the black pieces and the check to the king. The and now a rock move. No, Checkmate! No! Let's go! They did it! They did You know what he said when revenge. I went to the college? And they said after the tiebreaker there's gonna be an interview title. and he said divine we won't need an interview <laughs> oh my god. god poor blitz dude. said move his pawn and this dude goes okay and goes d6 <laughs> have you no sight of the threat why do you think i played c8 <laughs> let's go they did it they won twitch rivals just before pog chance 4 and that's how ludwig goes into his third participation at pog champs pog champs 4 he goes into it being one of the favorites and that's when i told him what i told him really i know it, i know it sounds like we're, we're making it sound like you won the match <laughs> poor ludwig we are just like jake you're <laughs> doing it, it right lud no this was sh <laughs> <laughs> No, Ludwig, but honestly, Ludwig, we just consider you one of the favorites and we thought that today it wasn't your best performance. That's the only thing that worried us a little bit. You normally don't bot this gambit. Yeah. I called him sh** because we know how good he is by now. He has improved so much from Pog Champs 1 all the way through the Twitch Rivals events, the Minecraft championships, the winners, days, every single chess event he participated in, he kept grinding. He kept taking lessons from GM Hess. And it shows that he sleeps on the Dwarski endgame manual because he has improved a lot. And we considered him one of the overall favorites, not only in his group, in Pog Chums 4, but for the trophy, for winning it, for taking it home. But he didn't always show his best and he even blundered his queen against Jake. Yet, he won the match. Regardless of the queen blunder, he won the match and he was to play again against Mr. Beast. But Mr. Beast this time came more than prepared. He memorized 20 moves as a poem. He memorized what to do against Ludwig Scandinavian and that led to this final position and this clip of Mr. Beast. I think he knows so it. Happy. Wow. Let's go. What a yes. I can't believe I just beat him. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. None of you. None of you thought I was going to beat That's this That's true. Man. None of you. Look at that. That is right. Okay, to be fair, I thought you might. I thought you might. And he did, and this is Ludwig watching that clip of Mr. Beast celebrating his first win against Ludwig during the match. There were breaks in between the games, few minute breaks, and Ludwig is watching this tweet while getting ready for the second game, and he is now in a must-win situation. He needs to win the game in order to get back into the match, and that's when this endgame arises on the board. Ludwig with the white pieces, Mr. Beast has only a king, but there could be stalemate. If I play g7, then I'm attacking this. Okay, now he's switching. This guy's protecting. What is he doing? The king blocks this square, and it's attacking this square. There's so no he way he doesn't know how here. to win this. In fact, it'll be a he's four. Does he know it? I'm not stalemate. Does he now not? He realized that the king maneuver he was my aiming next for move, is not the best. Imagining the king is here, and my pawn is here. Let's I'll look go at up his, one. Uh, arrows. And He's the calling king Ludwig, Mr. Beast. Forced to go down. <laughs> Trying to call him. Okay. That I was think Mr. Beast it. on the you phone, but here, Ludwig but didn't that. realize that he <laughs> he is being called right now. Mr. Beast was trying everything he could, including phoning during the match. He was trying to make a phone call with his opponent, but Ludwig didn't see it. Or I'll get a queen. Now he has to be careful though, because if the king comes closer, that is a stalemate. I mean, okay, I've go. only heard of a few people who didn't answer Mr. Beast's phone call. It did not end well for them. You always pick up the phone Here? when Mr. Beast calls. 
plug Very in. true. What are you Very doing? True. The money you could get is much higher than this prize fund. <laughs> true. There we go. Checkmate on the board. What a comeback by Ludwig. Check. Mr. Beast applauding. That was a huge comeback, but that only tied the score. And what happened later is that Ludwig realizes that he has a missed call from Mr. Beast. Hey, I was going to say, hurry up and end me. Jesus, it took you like 45 minutes to kill my last little piece there at the end. Dude, right, I was, I was nervous, all right? Well, I'm winning this next game. Sorry for beating him. <laughs> he hung up and he hung well, up why does he have to be better than me at chess this is it another tiebreaker 1-1 one, one, the result after the first part of the match the official rapid part so we see a blitz game 3 plus 2 3 minutes with a 2 second increment we reach an end game where it feels like it's impossible to mess up it's Ludwig that has a rook and the knight up with the black pieces. Mr. Beast played some bullets, it but I think Ludwig completely had a is desperate. A very, very and much lost situation. Not even stalemate holes because White has so many pawns to move. But Will look at that it? pawn push. Yeah, he is, is making it through. He created a passport that cannot be stopped. That pawn either takes the knight or promotes to a queen. So Mr. Beast, from a position where he was completely lost, he's down a rook and a knight for nothing. He now can win. The threat. Wait a second. Oh it's my God. What is winning? Two squares, two squares to promote. Two squares to promote. So he what can stop both. But oh. he's going to the wrong square with the... He went to the wrong square, Mr. Beast. Because now the knight can escape with a check. Had the king come back and attacked the rook, there wouldn't have been a knight check. King, now the knight can move away with a check. Knight check. Oh God. Oh no. That, that was so... so that would have been Elsewhere. He had to go elsewhere. Now uh, the rook stows the pawn. That was almost that was so a close. miracle. Absolute miraculous comeback it could almost have been. Miracle. Yep. Well, I don't think he's gonna... You know, last time Ludwig was baiting the stalemates, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He's bringing out the king. Remember Andrew's words. Remember Andrew's words. Last time Ludwig was baiting, but he knows his stuff. He's not gonna stalemate increments of three minutes plus two second increment he has now collected a lot of time went all the way up what? to a minute no! No! <laughs> <laughs> on the clock. Yes! Yes! white to move so a quick recap about stalemate it's white to move but white has no legal moves the king cannot move into a, a square that would be check but it's not currently in check so it's not checkmate because the king is not in check at the same time white has no legal moves and it's white to move it's half a point for each player meaning that the match is still a tie one and a half one and a half after three games and we have now a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker this end game that you see for Mr. Beast is a draw. It it is a draw because there's no way to to break through and the bishops are on opposite colors, meaning that you cannot even offer a trade between them. This light squared bishop of black will always be guarding this pawn, and this bishop of white can never attack anything on the light squares. So it should be a draw, but Mr. Beast made a mistake. More space and that led to in the right moment. Still should be very difficult. That led to careful defending this the pawn end game with no bishop pawn. and the Good pawn running for Ludwig. Ludwig who put a lot of he messed it up Beast big in. time. A drone Will end there game, be another stalemate? On the time pressure, Will you can there be another the stalemate though Beast, the for another draw? The big mistake. For another he knows draw. It. He knows that he might not get another chance at the stalemate <laughs> with the queen down. I mean, with Ludwig's performance today, if I was Mr. B, I'd say him 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> Stayed hopeful. But no, I think Ludwig has learned his lesson too many times today. I think he learned it. I think this will lead to a checkmate. He's taking the last pawn of Mr. Beast, making sure that he cannot lose on time. Or even if he loses <laughs> on time, he wouldn't lose the full point. Yep, I had a feeling, you know, he wants to feel confident. He knows how to checkmate with two queens. There we go. Nice. That was such an impressive match. Deserves the applause. Deserves the applause. What this was the longest 
ever Pog Champs match in all Pog Champs history. They needed four games, four games to decide a match. Sometimes there's a tiebreaker, not often, sometimes there's a tiebreaker. Ludwig has played the highest number of tiebreakers, but this was a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker, and it almost needed a tiebreaker of the tiebreaker of the tiebreaker. They were playing on and on and on forever for that cat made suit. But it looks so relieved. That was the f hardest chess game I have ever played in my life. Mr. Beast, it felt like you surpassed your own expectations. What a match it has been. Yeah, it was funny because uh, before the match, you guys said like, what was Listen it? They bet three million Jimmy points on say. Lud, only hundred thousand on <laughs> me. And I was like, oh no, yep. now I now I gotta win. Yeah, I mean, it's the same as last year. Lug, you you literally do the same thing every single game. <laughs> I know your first 25 moves, like the back of my head. I know the first 25 moves. I honestly could have pre-moved them all, but I was worried you would notice. And then, so I had to like literally sit here and count to 10 and then move and then count to 10. And there's like a part where there's a free pawn and I didn't take it because I still had 10 more moves to make. And I was just like, we're doing these. Uh, and like, I just had someone literally study your last like 200 games and like, you do the same thing every time. It's hilarious. His coach, Mr. Beast prepared for that match against Ludwig with Danny Ranch, big boss at chess.com. Danny prepared Mr. Beast and Ludwig prepared with Grandmaster Robert Hess. But in this situation, clearly Robert and Ludwig did not see this coming, that Mr. Beast was ready to memorize 20, 25 moves of theory so that he would know how to beat Ludwig's only opening. He always plays the Scandinavian and he always plays it the very same way. Very well prepared. He memorized the moves just like a poem. <laughs> he literally said that he, he didn't want to pre-move just so that Ludwig doesn't notice it. So like yeah, we okay. were at the exact so, spot 20 moves in that I knew we were going to be in. I'm not going to stand for this defamation. Yes, it is true that I do the same moves. But last year, I thought you were like into chess because Queen's Gambit just came out. I thought you were like all hype on it. This year, all right, I've been seeing you've been into a lot of poker and you texted me. I have no idea what I am doing. You're definitely going to win. Ha ha. So I was like, <laughs> oh, this jabroni is going to be yeah, trash. You had it. You, dude, you could have literally moved like any other pawn in the game and I was screwed. I'd be like trying to take a pawn that's not there and be like, oh, what do I do? My plan's ruined. <laughs> the story of Mr. Beast's incredible win over Ludwig and how difficult this match became. Mr. Beast being the complete underdog when it comes to rating. It's twice as much rating for Ludwig, but it didn't matter because Mr. Beast was there with the fighting spirit. He didn't want to put on that cat made suit. On a side Boys. note, Ludwig literally flew to wherever Mr. Beast lives and they ended up playing poker one match after the other. $50,000 prize pot. This is not part of Ludwig's Pox Gems journey, but actually it is because he ended up playing his match in the championship bracket against Box Box from the kitchen of Mr. Beast. He was playing from his laptop with a trackpad standing in the kitchen. He didn't even have a chair. That's how he played a championship match against Box Box in Park Gems 4. Everything for that poker game. He ended up having two queens after losing the first game. But remember, for Ludwig, it's no bother if he loses the first game. He fights back. And so he did. He's trailing. He has to win this game to earn a tiebreaker against Boxbox. He's got the two queens. He's got everything he needed. And then, I don't think he will stay on it. Be careful, Ludwig. Okay, I think he's thinking it through just so that there's no stalemate. Where is he going? Oh. He's pre moving. But wait a second, if he pre moves those moves, he is, is there a way to stem it? I hope there's not a way to stem For anyone who's not familiar with that chess term pre move, it means that he is telling the computer in advance this and this and this and this and this and this will be my move. And if you pre move a move, it can be only one, it can be two, it can be five. He's pre-moving literally like almost 10 moves. If you do that input, it means that 
whatever your opponent plays your move is already chosen you chose it in advance you are saving yourself time he didn't really need to save time he has over a minute on the clock it was more about his confidence i feel like he was very sure of that ladder checkmate because that's how you go with the two queens taking one row after the other but he forgot that there's a slight slight chance of taking too many squares away too soon wait a second he pre-moved the whole thing and i'm not sure that those pre-moves will always work out depending on where the king is oh my god fuck yeah a move like a staircase like a staircase yes. Oh my goodness, this is why you don't get cocky, because look what Boxbox Box figured out, that if his king could get here, these queens <laughs> march up the God. board and it's a stalemate, and honestly, it's the perfect time for our play of the game presented by Eternal.gg. Oh my God. Andre and I out. Let's just take us a few steps back here. There was checkmate in one move. Your Ludwig has a minute and a half and he was pre-moving. Why did he pre-move it all? Ludwig started doing the Says the person who also stabbed with two queens. Queen. 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 That's me the in a bullet game. That Levy trolled me for. And then at this oh my moment, gosh. the king has one safe square to go to. So if it were Black's move, it would not be stalemate. The king can escape. And then the pre-move, going for your typical ladder checkmate, it fails because queen f7 not a check no moves to the king that is stalemate box box sails through to the next round of pog champs andrea i, I can hardly believe it you know Jeez. i think what we learned today is that being a chad can also be a man's greatest weakness but <laughs> was just too confident he rolled that man he had a minute he had so much time and that was the end for Ludwig, he was eliminated, oh, and this is his reaction to being so eliminated from Pog that, Champs that's 4. The spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> the three of us are dancing. Yeah! That Still is the spirit. Pass! Pass, don't be mad at me. He's gonna give you the silent treatment. What? Why? He's so mad at you. He said, I can't say anything during this interview. You're I'm mad so disappointed. He's furious. He's not going to say words. Listen, we really mad at me. Look at that. No words. Yes, we, we did great. Welcome both Ludwig and Boxbox to the show. Okay, Ludwig, Anna, get I'm not out, out on there. You. Down, <laughs> you're not mad at but me. Say you still I, love me. I, where did love come from? What's love got to do with it? No. <laughs> 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 um, Box, box. We we simply must start with you. How far away did you st see that stalemate trick? Uh, well, the moment I blundered my queen, uh, <laughs> I uh, I remember this one video I saw of Eric Rosen uh, forcing a stalemate <laughs> off of like guessing what his opponent was going to pre-move. So I was like, okay, that's all I can do. <laughs> Let's just trade off material and just like pray. We'll just like Very well timed, play Eric random Rosen. moves. Sorry, thank you, Eric me again. Off the -move and there we are. It was insane. We were like, "There's no chance. There's gonna stalemate." Like I was like, "Why is Box Box playing on?" But you proved us wrong. Love you. Anything on your mind right now? <laughs> yes, I'm feeling money, dude. I played out of my mind. I owned that nerd of her opening game one. Then I choked the bag. That was all you, baby. Game two, fucked him. Pre-move, the most Ludwig thing that could have possibly happened. Uh, <laughs> it'll be great for my clip channel, not so great for my chess repertoire. Uh, but I feel good. I don't know. That's this spirit. was a bit of a janky setup I've been using today. And I feel like <laughs> I played really well. And he did good game one. And this wasn't a W for me, but I get it. Albert, you started this tournament saying you are mad that I took Hess away from you. And I don't know who your coaches were, but not close. <laughs> tell you what. He did something unforgivable. What did he do? What did he do? He stole my coach. Oh no! Wait, who was your coach? He stole Robert, Robert, Hess? Robert Hess from you? Robert Hess, my favorite coach. And then wow. 
Yeah, Hess messaged me saying like, I'm so sorry. I haven't been seeing your messages recently. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm on a vacation to the Bahamas with Ludwig. <laughs> Voxbox did say he wanted to eat Ludwig because he stole Robert Hess as a coach. And then he did, he did. And he eliminated Ludwig from Pogchamps for streaming from the kitchen of Mr. Beast. That was the end of Ludwig's Pogchamps journey so far. But I think at this rate, he'll be back for Pogchamps 5. And I'm sure hoping that he'll do even better because he deserves it. He has been on the grind for so long. He has improved so much. And even if I called him shit, that was because he really, truly can play a lot better than he did that day against Jake. And he knows it. He knows it to such extent that he gave me a free chess lesson. No, I, I'll actually never fuck up triangulation again. Because here's the idea. Here's the basic. Oh, Anna's here? Okay, perfect. So, Anna, if you guys, if you don't know about triangulation, which totally get, like, not a big deal. It's some weird nitty-gritty endgame stuff. Basically, basically, the idea is that this square right here kind of prevents, like, any action, right? Any motion in the ocean, okay? Motion so, motion. right? So, you're falling. Mm -hmm. So, anytime he's here, that means I can get in. So, I'm waiting to do that. Mm. I see. Uh oh now I'm there. Because now it's his turn. He has to move. Legally, he has to move. Uh -huh. And then I'm in. And then I grab that bitch. Yeah. And then I'm like, uh-oh. What's this? Oh, is this me fucking checkmating his ass? Uh -huh. And then you just get... Lud? Even during his endgame masterclass to me, he still made it. If there's one thing, Ludwig... You can improve on it's a bit more of that level of danger and i know you do it sometimes i know you were checking on the back rank squares in your games against mr beast but yeah stalemate stalemate is the kryptonite of ludwig once he gets over stalemate positions who knows the sky is the limit love skywalker You've got this. I'm hoping to see Ludwig at future chess events for more chess lessons like this. And just to see him grow at the game that he genuinely likes. He really enjoys playing chess and he thinks it's one of his best games. When he talked about all the games he does, because obviously his channel is a variety channel. He does a lot of different things, but he considers that chess is one of the games he's the best at among all the games he plays on his stream. And he's not a professional of any game. And chess has become one of the kindest to his heart and one of the games that he actually started making huge progress at. It's huge progress and once the stalemate is out of the door, maybe a Pog Chance 5 trophy is on the horizon. But I just wanted to add on a side note that I wanted to start with Ludwig and observe his chess journey. Um, not because he's a student of mine, he's one of the few Pogchamps participants that I have nothing to do with. I got a free lesson from Ludwig, I did not give him a lesson. I have been coaching his girlfriend Cutie Cinderella and I get on very well with Cutie. Whether Ludwig knows or not, he has had a major impact on how I see streaming. He is one of the few streamers that I listen to for actual advice and tips on streaming and in particular his video about don't start streaming before watching this i did start streaming before i watched this video but then when i was already a full-time streamer i watched this full video of what he had to say about his streaming experience and how he believes content should be viewed for instance that streams are recordings and how you should organize your streams from the introduction of the idea to the meat and potatoes and the conclusion he breaks it down so well in this video that i wanted to do a similar style ludwig storyline video about ludwig if that makes sense he's the one from whom i learned that this is how streaming can be taken that 
I should have a concept, I should have a storyline, it should go from somewhere to somewhere. And that's just one of the few things. There's so many other cool tips and advice he gives in this video, but I wanted to I wanted to try to apply what he teaches in this video to a Pokchim storyline about him. Thank you so much for watching. This was streamed live on my Twitch channel where I stream full time five days a week. Do catch us live next time or follow the highlights and the votes here on my YouTube channel. In either case, I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much again and bye for now. Until the next time.